Today is a very special day. Lexi and James are coming out to the cabin to celebrate her 22nd birthday. This morning, I thought I would start this intro out in the chicken coop. That's where we are, out in the chicken chalet, because we kind of did a thing. And if you follow me over on Instagram and Facebook, you already have a sneak peek of what we're doing, but do you hear it? Let me show you. Yes, we got me birds, woo woo, I'm so excited. You guys know if you've been following us since Virginia when we had the farm and our small homestead there, we do meat birds every year. We usually do 25 to 30 meat birds. We process them and put them in the freezer and then we eat homegrown, fresh, delicious chicken all year long. This year we got almost 50 meat birds, but we are sharing some of those with James and Lexi. Um, I think they're gonna buy like seven to 10 of them, but uh, we are a big chicken eating family. I don't know about you guys. I mean, we, we eat all the things, beef, lamb, pork, fish, chicken, we eat all that, but we are a big chicken eating family. So I'm really excited and I know they're super cute. I know that, I know some of you, cause you message me and you're like, they're so cute, how do you do that? They're cute right now. <laughs> if you've raised meat birds, then you know in about six to eight weeks, they're not cute anymore. These birds are bred to, for me, they're bred to get big, significantly fast. And so they only have to be raised for eight to 10 weeks and then they're ready to be processed and put in the freezer. That's one of the things I love most about meat birds. They don't require you to take care of them and raise them for a long period of time. In fact, if you let them go beyond that, they get too big and they, they start to die off. You know, they have a hard time getting to the water bowl and getting to the food bowl because they get so big that their little legs can't hardly carry them. So eight to 10 weeks, that's the magic number for us. So this is gonna be an awesome spring project. Probably mid to late May, we'll have a big processing day. Lexi and James are gonna come out and help us. And we have a stainless steel sink. We have a chicken plucker. We have all the things and we just knock it all out. It's just like a, an assembly line, you know what I'm saying? But it's really exciting. And Parker was excited. Parker grew up raising meat birds. And of course, at this stage in their life, he always has fun with them because they're so cute and fuzzy and cuddly. So this temporary brooder box is temporary. Right now they don't have their adult feathers so it's too cold to put them outside. So this is kind of the perfect time here to be getting them because once they're old enough to go outside, it'll be warm enough that they'll be able to handle it. At which time we will have a little DIY chicken tractor built for them because let me tell you guys something. Meat birds eat a lot and they drink a lot and they poop a lot. So putting them in like a stationary coop like this is not very smart in my opinion. We've done it before and I mean to tell you, you have to clean that coop out almost every other day because there is just so much poop and Part of why we're raising our own meat is because it's important to us how they live. And I certainly don't want my chickens living in their own feces and walking in five inches of it, right? That's disgusting. So we have found that with meat birds, chicken tractors are the best. You move them around every couple of days, they get fresh grass and plants and bugs and get that natural diet and you don't have to clean a coop out. And it's kind of fertilizing the ground. So it's like completing that cycle, right? So we picked these little guys up a few days ago and Parker was super excited. We got a ton of um, the guy gave us ended up giving us a few extra ones because he lost count so we only ordered 45 but I think we ended up with like 49 or 50 so we got them home and Joe just kind of threw together this little quick brooder box you know it doesn't have to be anything special and we did repurpose some pieces of our catio you guys know we have the cat enclosure that we bought for the kitties we had some pieces that we didn't use of that and so we repurposed that to make this little lid that lifts up and down so it's great meat birds are just the perfect animal for a small homestead, especially when you're trying to live more self-sufficiently. I just love that feeling that we know how they were raised, we know what they were fed, and I know that I'm putting good wholesome food into my family's bellies. They're here. Hi. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? I got something. I thought it was cute. What is it? You have to do it's it. cute too. I like that. Thanks. Don't steal it. You ready? What? The birthday girl! Oh, oh, da, da, da. oh look how cute you look! Oh, oh you look like a mermaid! Like Mermaids a mermaid. are not real, Lexi. I need a mermaid. I'm Ariel. Do the mermaid. Oh, that's a dolphin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Lexi, 
Hello. Do you want to see my room? You haven't seen it yet. I have not. Come on. So this is the soon-to-be pantry. Okay. Turn the light on, Joe. Yeah. yeah, so it's, you know, obviously not done. Oh, no. It's a bit messy, but. Dang. Yeah, it's going to be big, huh? Right. All right, so obviously the armoire won't be there anymore. Right. Because right? right. we're going to get rid of this. I'm trying to I'm convince you to take it home. Yeah, she's trying to get us to take this home. Like we have any room for that. sell it on Facebook Marketplace. No, I'll right? sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, I'll take it actually. Oh no. no. <laughs> yeah, so this is this eventually is gonna be my office space, but it's not done obviously. You have like a little whiteboard or a little bulletin board, you know? Put, it's gonna be, a a sign, it's gonna be Life with Tina, the sign, because I'm gonna start my podcast again. Life with Tina? That's that's the name of my podcast. Before you ever started a channel, Life with Lex, my podcast was called Life with Tina. Mm. So. This is cute. What color is it? Yeah, it's, it's I guess, uh, I wasn't going to okay. tell everybody yet, but eventually I'm going to restart the podcast. Oh. Um, it changes colors, but I'll probably do like a soft white. That's but yeah, cute. It's like a little neon sign. You I like know. That. Yeah, That's so this is the office space. Swell. Joe, I got your dogs in there again. Babe, no, Ew. no dogs in the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this oh. is the bedroom. Oh, there's my cake. Oh, that yeah, that's your cake. I put it in delicious. here because it's cooler back here. I didn't yeah. want it to melt. <laughs> oh, it looks pretty in here. Yes. Isn't it cute, Lexi? Yeah. I yeah, love you have to come it. See my room. You would get on my maid bed. Oh, God forbid. Alexis if I do that to her, though. You know that well, is because a pet peeve of mine. That, yeah. Because I used to do that every That's time. Like the um, um, what did you say? Because I, like, I used to do that every that time when I lived with you guys. Every oh, time yeah. when you were at home, when I would make my bed, you would come and jump on my bed. Yeah. Yeah. Cute though, huh? It is. I really like it. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's been cute. awesome. Now the whole house needs to match. I know. We're working on it. Yeah, <laughs> One project at a time. Oh, you got a dimmer light. Oh. We're going to take a brown hair. Let's do a little sneak peek. Kaylin. <laughs> what? No, ma'am. It is not present time. Oh, what? Lexi? What? Are you supposed to like cover <laughs> that up? Mm, no, it's not. Aren't oh, they cute? Oh, they're so cute. Lexi, can you get that egg in there? We've got a fresh egg. She's gonna get me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like hoodies. If you push your sleeve up, she'll be she'll be nice. She doesn't like hoodies. No, There's nothing up. under there. This is over no, to the right. it is. Pull your sleeve up. Yeah, pull your sleeve up. She no. Y'all like no, want me to get big. She doesn't like hoodies. There you go. There you go. She likes hoodies. No, skin. she's going to get me. I have PTSD with chickens. Oh, she's looking at me. Please be nice. Peachy <gasps> nice. <laughs> Once you get your hand under her, she won't do oh nothing. God, I'm so scared. Ah! <laughs> I don't want to do this. Feel around, all up under her. Mom, there's no egg under here. Go farther in. Mom, there's not a single egg under there. Yeah, Parker already checked. Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I don't like you guys. <laughs>
Look at this, Lexi's candles. I bought her two number two candles because she's 22. And when I got them out this morning for her cake, they were both broken right down the center. So Joe heated up this little piece of metal in there and stuck it inside the candle to hold them together. So far, so good. So first we tried to just melt the candles back together because you would think that you could just melt the candles back together and they would be fine and it wasn't working. And then it was turning the candle black and it was ugly. And then what do we try to do next? Super glue. We tried to super glue the candles back together and that didn't work either. So the heated little piece of metal is working because Joe's a genius. All right, Lexi, it is time. I hope you like everything. I picked everything out for you. Oh. I know, right? It's just a girly goodie bag. Oh, yeah. You like I that color? Some more. Yep. That's the color I have on today. This one? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one? Oh, it's so pretty. I know. I got a regular one, and then I saw those, and I was like, oh, no. I have to get her the I can't wear this now. Yeah. I need me some pairs. I know. They write really good and they're purple. These are the th I know. These are really good ones. The sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope. I knew it! Ah! <laughs> oh, snap. I'm scared. You better like it, girl. Those things ain't cheap. Oh, man. It's a drone. Just, Just please don't here. crash it like I did mine. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a kit for it. Yeah, it's a protective case. Standing on a field with you. It's like a protective, yeah, you can take that off. These drones get awesome, like 4K video footage. Yeah. Yes, it's a it's a really good drone, Lexi. <laughs> Where does this go at? This way.
should tell Dad we need a baby to Parker. Yeah. Dad, Well, good morning. Good Welcome morning. back to another day here on our homestead. We're out taking care of the animals this morning. We have a snow blizzard that blew in overnight. Joe had to get up in the middle of the night and adjust the solar panels. That thing is like, when it's standing straight up and those wind gusts come, that could turn out really badly. So we always have to adjust them and kind of monitor it throughout the storm. But he did have to get up at like four o'clock in the morning and go tie some stuff down and adjust those solar panels. So when it's flat, it's better for the wind. It just cuts right through the panel instead of that resistance, you know, up against the wind. So the uh, animals are doing well. Chicks are all doing well. We lost one so far. Um, I'm kind of surprised. Usually when you get a big batch of meat birds like that, it's pretty typical to lose one or two or three. You know, sometimes they don't do well during shipping and things like that, but so far we've only lost one, so I'm really grateful. And the sheep, uh, at least Naomi, is starting to act a little weird. So I noticed the other day I came out, I checked their, their udders to see if they were starting to bag up. Uh, they are both starting to a little bit. Now Naomi has never lambed before. So when we first got Naomi, she had no bag at all. It was just her two little teats on, on her belly. And now she's got a little bit of something going on. So I think we're getting close. I think we'll definitely have April lambs, but they're both very wide and getting very big. And she's just kind of had a little bit of a different appetite the last couple days. She's normally pouncing to me at the gate to get the grain and I've been having to get her to come in and eat. So, you know, it's typical for them to kind of have fluctuation in their appetite when they're getting closer to lambing. So I think we're getting close. Obviously, I don't know the day. Their udder is the best way to know how soon they're coming because their udder will just bag up with milk right before they're ready to lamb. So that's the update on Esther and Naomi. Definitely gonna be some April lambs going on. Oh, it has 
That's a good girl. Yeah, you're a seasoned mama, aren't you, Esther? Yes, you are. So when we got Esther from the breeder here in Alaska, uh, they informed us that she typically has twins, but she does not take too kindly to the female. She had female and male, and you guys might remember Abel, that was her male lamb. He is now in the freezer, but when she first had them, she would only let Abel nurse. She would kick the female lamb off, so they had to bottle feed the female. So we are uh, kind of going into this knowing that that is a very big possibility that that may just be something about Esther, and we may have to bottle feed a lamb. I hope not, right? It's not always, always nice when the mamas take care of their own babies uh, for convenience for the homesteader but it's also a very sweet and uh, cuddly experience when you get to bottle feed a baby animal we had that happen many times on the farm in Virginia bottle feeding little piglets and things that the moms kicked off and you know that's a possibility but I'm hoping maybe Esther uh, is gonna be a better mom for us this year so we shall see You guys remember the trailer, the enclosed trailer I was telling you about in the last video? It's like our workshop slash storage shed because we don't have a garage yet. Well, we're hanging out in the trailer today. We have to build a new hay feeder for Samson, our ram. You guys know that we recently made him his own little pen because he kind of got aggressive and was trying to headbutt us when we would go in the pasture. And the hay feeder that Joe had made him, I wouldn't even call it a hay feeder. It was just like this wooden thing with a roof on it and then a big old plastic bin for us to throw the hay in. Well, he has since completely thrashed the plastic bin and just tore it to pieces. So we're gonna do something a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more permanent. Um, that way he will stop wasting all of his hay. This is not gonna be anything fancy. We're just using some scrap wood that we had around the property and uh, just gonna make up a little hay feeder for him with the roof. The most important thing is that it has a cover on it so that when it rains and snows, it doesn't get his hay wet. You nail those things in way better than I did on that pasture fencing. Because you're a man. Hey, well, you're meant to work with you nails and hammers, you know? I'd like to see you bake some sourdough bread. If 
feels like 15 degrees warmer without the wind, doesn't it? That's your snow fort? Yeah. Go, go, go. Hey, it's big in there. Go, go, go. There's so many icicles and stuff under I here. I know. Like right there. See if there's enough, like, if there's coming. Oh. Yeah, these don't poke out. They're gonna have to pull it out a tiny bit. Get the pliers in there. Mm -hmm. It's just your little girl hands. It's you. <laughs> Joe, you know what? I'm supposed to have girl hands. You know why? Because why? I'm a girl. Oh, gosh. It's like a little tiny wire. You should put a nail right there. You know? It is straight up a blizzard out here. <laughs> Look at the snow. I mean, this is crazy. Oh my goodness. Fall spring, they call it. Fall spring, this is definitely, yeah, we, we were thinking it was melting and Joe said we're supposed to get like five inches on Thursday. Usually when it says that, we get double that up where we live. So I think winter's far from over for us for a little while. <laughs> You look at me like I'm crazy When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments Doesn't mean I don't need you I, I, I fell in love with your colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking You gave him a Fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Stay We fly around like paper planes They never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something Cup after cup, yeah, it's just the way we do it. Anything just to block out the real life, real life. Yeah, we love in the way they think we're so messed up. up. Even if what we're doing is bad, there's so many emotions. Sharing stories that we never had yet, none is real. I think we're searching for reasons not to be like them. them. We fly around like paper planes, they never know where we will fall. Nobody can see us, still they wanna tear us apart. There's something different about the way we are.
There's something different about the way we are. Girl! You sound like the old ambulances. <laughs> We get some of the coolest gifts from some of our viewers, and we've gotten some really unique ones in the past, but we just got probably the most <laughs> unique gift from, uh, what was her name, Joe? Susan, Susan Hansen. It wasn't for us, though. It was for Bradley and Gunner. He's eating a zebra. They're leg. the lion kings of Alaska. We got a tame beast. He's eating remains. <laughs> He's eating a zebra. It matches their skin. It so does. Well. Like their James, hit it. Where's the song? Pasapena. I'm a Lushki, baby. I'm a Lushki, baby. i Joe! Oh my gosh. Samson! You're just mean. You're gonna mess my pile up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! Back up. Oh, Joe, he's coming. Samson, what's your problem? You're not gonna make friends that way, you know. Uh. Joe! Oh, <laughs> Missed it. Ready? Get it. Get it. Ready? Psych. <laughs> Psych. Really?